All right, this is not the quick speed shop. Check it out. My Dodge truck. There's a core support. There's inner fenders. There's outer fenders laying around. We're starting to put the front end back together on this thing, and we're going to get the brakes working, put all the juice in there. So we got brake action, and you're going to see it all starting right now here at the quick speed shop. So last video, I went and I got the sandblaster out and I sandblasted some rust on a core support and the inner fenders and I got them all painted with a rust encapsulator and brushed it on out of a quart can, but got those all encapsulated and the core support is ready to mount. That's exciting because once we get that on, we can put the inner fenders on, the outer fenders, the radiator and all that stuff. But before I want to do that today, I want to bleed the front brakes, or actually bleed the brakes all the way around because it's going to be a lot easier to get to the calipers and stuff like that. So uh, a few videos ago, I put a new booster and a new master cylinder on here. These are actually for a one ton truck with a Dana 60 axle because uh, they don't repop or remanufacture the three quarter ton booster or mat right now. So I had to step up to a Dana 60 master and booster. I hope it's going to work out all right. I mean, it should. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, the only difference between that master and the one that was on the truck is the one that was on the truck was this like modern style aluminum plastic reservoir. And this one is cast iron old school, but it all plumbed up the same. So uh, I'm going to pop the master off. We're going to bench bleed it real fast and then we're going to slip it on the truck. And I think I'm just going to open all the bleeders and see if the thing will gravity drain fluid down to the wheel cylinders and the calipers for a while because there's this truck's got entirely new brake system all new lines hoses cylinders calipers there's no fluid in it whatsoever no fluid in that so it's going to take quite a bit to get it, get the brakes functional but everything is brand new front to rear now in order to do this we need to pump fluid from the master cylinder back into itself and you can bend up fittings and make hard lines to do this i have a like a little kit that's just got little plastic adapters and rubber hoses that thread in to the master cylinder. The rear brake fitting is a little bit bigger. What's this one? This one's half 20. I think the the rear, the front is half 20. I think the rear is 9 16 maybe. I'll tell you in a sec when I spin it around. But basically you just crank these little plastic jobbers in here and they, they are flared to fit. The uh, flared to fit the the master cylinder just like a piece of line, so they should seal up there. And then you get this little hose set up. Oops, let's hook the right one to where it goes. This little plastic clip and hose set up, and you just put your hoses, let them dangle into the fluid, and now you can push it and pump it in there. Actually flop that down. So what we need to do is uh, stroke this, so she said, with with a rod or something, and just work all the air out of the master cylinder. I'm gonna go get some brand new fluid, dot three, just regular dot three fluid, and we're just gonna go ahead and dump it right in. I'm gonna fill the bores up probably three quarters of the way, and then we're gonna push it with a rod here and activate this. And what we're looking to do is to push all the air out of the the bores and get this thing fully full of fluid so there's no air. If you just slap this on dry and try to pump it, you'll never get the brakes to pump up. The, uh, I mean, eventually it probably would, but you'd be fighting air for forever. You'd have random problems, no braking whatsoever. You, you need to bench bleed. The master you can do it in a vehicle i mean if you wanted to use your foot and stroke a bit it's a lot easier just to do it by hand on a workbench before you install it and that way you could also see if there's your new master cylinders leaking on the rear seal or not so what can i push it with i got this piece of aluminum will that work oh hell yeah so uh can you see what i'm doing so here you can see where the plastic fittings are in the hoses and what we're going to do is just we're gonna push this. Come on, go. Like that, there we go. And we're just gonna push it in. 
And you can see in the... Oh, there we go. We just got a little spurt. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but we're just going to keep working this. You'll see there's air coming out of the fittings there. We're just going to keep working it until there's no air coming out of the system. And you're just going to keep doing this and keep doing this until there's no air left. It, it's best to do it for a while, let it sit a little bit, let the air kind of move around. It's getting pretty uh, good. I'm still getting air here. The rear bore is going down quite a bit. The front's going down some. I'm going to go ahead and top off my fluid. If you let it suck dry, you'll have to start over again because it'll just put air right back into the system. And we are almost out of fluid on this guy. Fortunately, I have another one. Okay, I mounted the master cylinder back up on here. See how the level's down? It's going down, down, down. I'll show you why. It's already working. Check it out. It's gravity bleeding through this caliper. I don't know if you can see the air bubbles moving there. I don't know if you can see it. But I've just got it gravity bleeding into that little bin. I've got to add some more fluid here before we don't want it to get too uh, low. So let me go -go lug a little more into there. Try not to spill it all over the new paint on everything. And what I'll do is um, just let the same gravity bleed. Let's go to the back. I've got an open line down into a little bin. And the rear is obviously a lot farther away, so it'll take a while. I try to go to the farthest away. You see the hose here. I'm trying to be farthest amount away. And I'm just going to let it kind of percolate and drain down. What I can do is let it drain through this front for a little while here on this side. And then I can switch to the driver's side. And it'll just kind of run fluid all through it on its own. Well, how do you bleed by yourself? I use this pry bar here, and I jam it into the seat, and it's, uh, we're already getting good pedal. That's the booster making noise, but what I do is I pump it up a couple of times with the bar. I jam it into the seat like that, and I go around in my bleeder, and i just been going around the truck. I think right now I'm on the left front, aren't I? Yep. Where'd the wrench go? Oh no! I wanted to show you and I lost the wrench. Dang it! Aha! So then with the pressure on the pad, just come over here to the bleeder. Let's see if I can do it so you can see it. Let's see if I can do it so you can see it. I just go and I crack it. Oop, got a little bit of air right there coming out. And then Close her back up and then I pump it up again. The fluid is doing good in here. I don't see any more air getting in the master cylinder or anything, or actually, because we bunch blade that. Seems to be good, so I've just been going around. <clears throat> I just stopped this wheel. Now I'll pump it up again, and I'll go back to the left, or the right rear, the farthest away line, which did gravity bleed some, and I'll pump there, then I'll hit here, then I'll go to the right front, then the left front, I just keep going around. Obviously, if I had somebody here that could run the foot, you know, run their foot on the pedal, that'd be a lot faster because I could just hop around and do it all. But just slowly working it here, trying to get some brakes uh, pumped up. Let's see if we got any. Oh, yeah, that drum is feels like kind of stiff on there a little bit. This one is probably tighter because it's. Yeah, that one's locked up, so it's starting it's starting to do some stuff. And actually, now the brakes are all done. Let's go ahead and get the core support mounted. I've got the old uh, 75 core support here, this rusty one, and I got this one here. And you see where these holes are, where this used to mount? Let me back up here for a second. Using the 75 frame, which would mount to these outside mounts, which I have biscuits for. 
But in sometime between 75 and 80, they went and they started mounting the core support in here. Not, not these holes, this is a 75 frame. The actual mount hole for you know whatever the 80 style core support is over here, not here. It's like over here. So um, I'm gonna use, but they still put the, these mounts on the outside of the 80 frame I had had the core support mounted here, but they still had these mounts on the outside that just floated in space. So I don't know why they changed to go more inboard. I, it seems like you'd want your mount outboard more than inboard. I, I don't understand why I did, the, did that. Anyway, so I'm using the outside mounts. So I need to drill the holes in the core support to mount it. And they mount right next to the radiator here in this, uh, well, this pocket here. So I've lined these up and I measured off. Uh, you also notice these holes for the fender aprons, inner fenders are different for some reason. Uh, and also they added another layer of metal to the bottom here. This is just one couple of layers and this is like three layers with a really beefy bottom when they went to this inboard mount. So anyways, I measured over what we gotta be here and I'm gonna drill this 80 core support, or it's 80 something on the bottom, I, it's the top's 80, but anyways, I'm gonna drill it here, all the way through, the bolt will come through here, and it's gonna use the existing 75 style mount with the 80 and up core support. So I'm about ready to do that right now. Um, it's 7 16 bolts, I'm just gonna punch it out to probably half inch, and all the slop is in the, uh, the adjustment is in the biscuit on the frame itself, so you don't need a big hole here. All right, here we go, we're drilled out. And we should be ready to plop this guy on here. Can't see nothing, but I think, where's that center hole? That's centered there. Let's try that. I gotta, oh, there's a center hole there. There's my bolts. Whoa, whoa, easy now. Everything is super slippery because I put NICs on it. Oh, boy. Okay, there's one. I'll just say, look. Oh, yeah, we got all the adjustment. This is going to work out fantastic. Yep, look at that. Bam, bolts go right through. Almost like I knew what I was doing. So we'll just go ahead and we'll snug these up just a little bit. And then uh, I'll measure, I'll probably just center up the core support on the frame for now. Just guesstimate, uh, you know, center it up. And then once we get the fenders and all that put on and the hood, that's when you can you know, you need your adjustments to get it all dialed in. Yeah, yeah, see this? This can, this can go ahead and back like a lot. So I'll just, I'm just gonna try to get centered up, like I said, the best I can. I'm gonna go ahead and snug that, snug all these down. Hi. All right, core support is mounted. Yeah, it's just centered it up, like I said, snug it down-ish. Let's uh, get the inner fender on. I'm going to all stainless steel hardware because these bolts are in an area where they rot. They're, they, everything rusts really bad. Um, it's gonna be fluid film, but you know, I got, I got stainless hardware, might as well use it. So I got three quarter 20s in the front. I got a 5 16 uh, in the back. And then we'll just kind of lay it in here and bolt her on up. And then the inner, the outer fender kind of slips over the outer fender, the inner fender. So that then the actual fender sits down here and it bolts up from the underside to the inner fender. So I just happen to have the inner fender right here, fully restored-ish. By fully restored, I mean partially sandblasted and kind of painted. Let's see here, what's the best way to do this? Probably the rear bolt first, I would guess, maybe. No, 
Nope. Uh, where's the rear bolt? Way down there. So it goes like on top of the shock. Oh, easy. It's like another three hand job. This thing's kind of wonky. Nope, right there, mate. Ow, that's sharp. Just like that. All right, right before I bolt this down permanently, I'm gonna get some fluid film and I'm gonna shoot some fluid film between the two panels. Let's make sure we got maximum rust protection. That'll gooper right up. Yep, there we go. And uh, this one really doesn't touch anywhere except for that one spot, but. Look at that. Now the rear one, there's a lot of adjustment in this. So I'm gonna guess, we're gonna leave this one a little bit loose. And then when the fender gets on, it'll, uh, I'll be able to move it around to adjust where it's gotta be. So that's awesome. And you can see I've got original paint on here pretty much. Uh, cleaned it up the best I could. There's a little bit of tar still left on there, but got most of out. That's sharp right there. Got a lot of original paint left. The fender covers to here, so that's why this, you won't ever see this black when the fender's on. So the fender goes to about here, amounts on these two spots, but we got a lot of original paint still left on the hood to kind of match up. And uh, that looks mint. I would put the other inner fender on, but I've got to do some rust repair down here in the front. It's rusted out on the other fender. I got to replace this lower panel and I don't have time to do that right now in this video, but I'll work on it. Okay. It's the next night here. Check it out. Ow. Bang. Fenders. I brought the fenders up. Let's take a look. I've just been running a tap through the little clips here. These are quarter 20 clips. And see how there's some surface rust on this lip here? That's where the over the inner fender and the outer fender overlap. I'm gonna get some more of that this rust encapsulator here that I use on the inner fenders. I'm just gonna paint this edge where the uh, where they come together, just to put a little bit of um, protection on there. And the bottoms of both fenders have some rust down here. I'm not gonna worry about it. These are both is what it is. Like the brace is rotted off here, and. Uh, I think the inner fender attaches to this clip and somehow down here there was a mount that tied the fender into the bottom of the cab, I believe, somewhere. Yeah, that's that's that bolt there yeah, right here. So the fenders aren't bolted on here. I'm going to have to like drill through the fender or something there. I'm just going to bolt it on, but I'm not, I'm not going to worry about fixing that. It is what it is. These fenders aren't the best, but I do want to paint like under here where it sits on the core support. I'll paint this with the rust encapsulator. The rest of it's got pretty uh, pretty decent paint on it, so clean up here. And I am, before I put them on, I'm gonna get the fluid film out. I'm gonna fluid film up inside here where the lip is and all this stuff that's hard to get to and down inside this brace. I'm gonna fluid film, you know what, are these galvanized? These might be galvanized on the inside. I'm gonna spray fluid film inside the fender and then it's ready to go on. I did a little more assembly off camera. I got the battery box in here. I left it a little bit loose. I think it's loose. No, I might have tightened it down, but I wanted to be able to rack this front end around. But um, I got the hydraulic pump for the snow plow mounted up here, the Meyer plow. 
This has got the two control rods. I got the hoses here. They go through a hole that was drilled in the core support and uh, mount onto the plow assembly here. I uh, labeled them what they do, but I'll clean these up with a rag like I did under the hood. I didn't clean the grease off this because it probably leaks oil anyways. Is this loose? Nope. It probably leaks oil anyways, so I just left it grungy, whatever. Um, so that's there. So this, this fender is ready to go on this side as soon as I paint that lip. And here I'll show you how to, the plow controls work. Got two little knobs here. I think this one is up and down. Let's see. In and out. I think that's up and down. And this one has got a momentary where you push it in and it centers and you pull it. So I think I think this is the left and the right. I'm not sure. I never had the plow on it when I had it running before, but I'll figure it out. But it, all it does is it's like a manual valve body and the two rods push and pull on the on the valve body there. But the uh, pump pumps through here into the valve body, and then there's a canister that sits here. That canister over there, if you can see it, and it returns through here and then back into the pump down there. So that's ready to go. I will just, uh, like I said, get some paint on these, and the outsides don't look too bad. Uh, the driver's side fender is, I think, the worst one, like, dent-wise. It's got a couple little dings. It's got some damage where the door hit it there, which I pulled back out, is what it is. But overall, it's not too bad. The passenger fender over here is a lot straighter. I don't think there's any dings in it at all. Maybe on the top there. It's got some chips in the paint here, but it has the worst amount of rust here. It's got a little bit of rust through it down here, which I'm just going to... We're just going to slap it on like that. Yeah, that lower bracket must have been down here. So I'll try to attach the lower part of the fender the best I can. But like I said, I'll, I'll paint all this. I'll probably tape it. Actually, I'm going to... That's right. I flat blacked the bottom of the cab. So actually, this would be all flat black right through here on this body line. And I'm going to draw a line across here, just like the old macho wagons. Just paint this black here, so um, all this will be painted black. So it'll it'll kind of hide that hole a little bit. But same thing, I want to touch up this edge here. And what's, what's the inner part of the fender look like? Same thing, it's about the same shape. Same shape as the driver's side, except it's just got that little bit more rust down there. But we'll get her all painted up and uh, ready to install. So that's probably it for this video. Uh, I kind of like lost track of time, so I can't remember if this is long or short. But anyways, next time I think we'll put the front clip on and then we'll continue on. We got still got to put the box together, put the box on the frame. But I think once we get the front fenders on, I can put the wiring harness on, put the radiator in, get everything lined up. My friend Jordan will come over sometime. We'll put the hood on and then the front, all the front of the truck will be assembled then we can probably hook up a temporary fuel can back here on the fuel lines and uh, probably fire the motor up real soon. I've got to get the rear tank mounted back here. I've got to get longer U-bolts down here on the rear end and I can finish that up. I can hang the shocks all the way, get the fuel tank in here in the back. And then pretty much all we got to do is assemble the box and the truck will be almost done. So a lot of, uh, it's really coming together now. It's it's really starting to look like something with with all this on here, you know. Once we get the fender hang on here, it's really going to look awesome. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Come back next time. We'll put this front clip on and make this thing look like a truck once again. Don't forget to subscribe, do the things. We'll see you again. Bam, right here, working on a Dodge at the Quick Speed Shop.